Today on The Grid, it is Blind Photo Critiques Day, where we crush the hopes and dreams of viewers around the world. Mr. Kuna is back from his gallivantation. He's not in his RV. He's actually here in the studio. He's the real man. He's a can of ham. He's the real rocket man. Plus, we've got some giveaways. We've got some new stuff. We have something extreme, and we've got other cool giveaways, and it all starts in just 21.3 seconds. Let's go! One, two, three, the Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the first episode of 2023 of The Grid. Scott Kelby here with Mr. K. Well, hey Scott, welcome to 2023. Well, thank you. This is the first time I've seen you this year. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's been see. like a whole year. It has been. It's like I last time I saw you was 2022. So yeah. it's nice that you're back from gallivantation. I like to do that. Uh, you did gallivant during the holidays. I did. I gallivanted. He did, but, but uh, his gallivantation is, yeah. <laughs> is over. Yep. Anyway, glad to have you guys here. And uh, today is Blind Photo Critiques Day. We've had tons of people send in images. Uh, we're going to look through them and give honest blind critiques of them in a moment. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are watching for the first time, the reason we call them blind critiques is we do not mention anyone's name. We don't say whose name of the images we're looking at, so we can actually give honest critiques. So we can really tell you the truth, like... You know, unless you put those dreaded watermarks on your images and then we all know. Yeah, then, then everybody knows. But that's that's on you. But we're not going to we're not going to mention uh, yeah. your name. All right. Uh, we've got some great prizes to give away that we'll be giving away live to someone watching the show. And one of them is what the Kickstarter Ooh. kick butt. Look at this. Platypod Extreme. The Platypod Extreme. My favorite Platypod. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you can still get their holiday specials. Yeah. Like if you go to platypod.com, they still have oh, their wow. holiday specials going on. So you nice. can snag some great stuff. We're going to be giving away the platypod. So the stream has got the built-in little anchors, the built-in oh, yeah. feet. Those, that's what's great. I know. That's I know. So great. This is it. I know. And I would I yeah. would you know I had the 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 screws on the old one and yeah. I, I you have to take them out and screw them in. I would just I don't think I used them once. But now with this, I'm using oh, them yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. great. It's wonderful. They're, they're really great. What else are we giving away? And speaking of traveling, we're giving away Scott's travel photography book. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, travel. Scott's yeah. Scott's travel photography book. Yeah. And speaking of photography, we're giving away, away uh, Scott's Light It, Shoot It, Retouch It book. It, so we're giving away go. the ebook, e-book version. because the print book is not due till next month. Yeah, February 21st. Because, because they because printed it in South Korea. And it takes forever. Right. It has to be printed there and then shipped on a boat. We tried to get it done in North yeah. Korea. They weren't. They were not into <laughs> it at all. They were like, no. Yeah. No. And then we're also giving away a uh, copy of On One Effects 2023. Let's awesome go. Awesome plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. Yes, it is. Yep. And then uh, we're going to be giving away one V flat and one dual board XL from our friends over at V flat World. Um, they, that's for us shipping only. So just, if you're going to enter that us shipping only and, but everybody can get a discount over at V flat world. If they use the code Kelby 10 at checkout, they'll get 10% off their order. And then also our friends over to Imogen AI, uh, giving away a thousand AI edits. So if you go over to Imogen AI, um, you can go over there. This is a great, uh, tool for Lightroom classic where it takes your images, you upload your images, your looks to them. It studies the way you edit, and then it will apply your edits to future photos. However, you don't have to do that. You can use other ed- other people's um, looks. So they have uh, artists over there that have done their looks. You can use their looks as well. So check them out. Hey, look what else we got. Did you mention the trivia deck? Oh, I did not. We are giving away from Rocky Nook Publishing, the five, five folks, the five, five folks that publish my books. It's a trivia deck of photography. Yep. So it asks you, and, and I will say this, Eric and I have opened it and gone through here. We read a few on the grid. They are challenging. It's like triv- for, Trivial Pursuit for Photographers. Yes, yes, Trivial Pursuit for people who really know photography. It's for pho- yes. It's like deep into photography. I want to make one that people can actually answer. Like... <laughs> 
Like the photographers for dummies. Uh, yeah, version. I want to make one with trivia questions because, like, some of the trivia questions in here are like, you know, the you know the the Leica such and such a camera format was introduced in you know 1926. You know, uh, what was the cousin's name that was in the room where they came up with the name? You know, I'm like, you know, some of know. these are like, and s some of them are easier, but. But sometimes I was, you're playing the games to figure out the trivia. Yes, and you're learning the trivia. Yes. So anyway, well, we're giving away one, so what do you got to lose? Okay. There you go. So, and to enter, that, to enter that, all you got to do is leave us a comment right below wherever you're watching. Uh, we're monitoring. Leave us a comment what you'd like to win. And then also leave us a comment on any questions or anything that you would have uh, from the show. All right, and I have I have something for you to do on the break. It's not break time yet, but I do have something. I have something for you to do on the break. We'll wait till it's break time. But remind me. That's yep. Something okay. to do on the break. Something to do on the break. Okay. Let's well, take a look. We're doing blind critiques. We asked people yeah. to send three of their best images in. So it's three of your best images in any category. Uh, we're going to look at them first, and then we'll give our honest critiques. And um, I also, I just so you guys that have not uh, submitted, uh, I wrote an article about what to expect from these critiques, uh, which is the truth. No, the article is the truth. But, I mean, I basically yes. said, look, if you... How to know if you're ready for a blind critique? Because it's it's it can be very harsh. I've had them, I've had non-blind critiques. <laughs> they, they well, can those be, can be a lot harsh. They can be very harsh. Matter um, who it is. Uh, hey, if you want to see really an amazing critique, we we have a course that Joe McNally did. It's called an evening with Joe McNally, and we went to mm -hmm. this really neat theater, and we had the actual people come up on stage, sit with Joe, and go through their portfolio, and it was a, a an eye-opening night it was really really great now i will say this joe is very nice like he's very mm -hmm. encouraging and nice because the person's sitting right there and it's very hard to look someone in the eyes and go sell your gear you yeah. know it's not <laughs> joe was really really nice it's probably not going to go like that today just so you know because joe's nicer than we are ready to go here we yeah. go here's the first one let's take a look penalty Okay, let's start with the very first one, all right? The, the player, unfortunately, is, is going the wrong way. Yeah, it's you, looking the wrong way. There, yeah. there is a very simple, straight-ahead sports photography. It's called Two Eyes, eyes and a Ball. ball. Right. I see a ball. Two Eyes and a Ball. And Now, that, that's not to say... Those rules can be broken. Yeah, that's but true. But it has Absolutely. to be an amazing moment. And right yeah, now, it's like all it's... I can see is there's probably a penalty that was going to happen. Yeah, it looks and like the. He, I don't think he's going to catch that ball. It's not close enough to think that he's going to yeah, catch that ball. Yeah, I don't ball. know. You know, it, there's not enough separation. I'll tell there's you what. Separation you know what? You know what it is? Mm. Exposed, right? It's properly exposed. Like the camera settings were good. Yeah, I and, bet it was a good camera and a good lens. And you could go tighter on this you could you go could. a lot tighter you can always go tighter yeah uh you can't go much more that way yeah but right but about there that would make that a makes certainly better that's, better picture that's better uh but it's it's just unfortunately we're looking for a peak moment of action it's close to the peak moment of action i think the peak moment of action would be an, another second or you a half did, a you, second later. You did help a lot with the cropping. Yeah, you the did cropping, help a lot. The cropping did but help. But it's still like, yeah, he's yeah. not looking at you. The ball but, is not close enough. But I'm know. still going to give you props because yeah. you were trying to get a peak moment of an action. You know what makes a good yep. football shot. Yep. Unfortunately, the player was facing the wrong way. This same play where I could see the player's face, would, would uh, the same thing would still be a lot, would be a lot better. we both shot football. We both know this. A lot of the hard part about that is you don't get to pick where you are during the. Well, you get to pick. But yeah. It's hard to go. Well, I want to be on the other side. Well, you got to yeah. walk 100 yards to be on yeah. the other side. You also don't. <laughs> the the play's going where the play's going. Yeah, the play's going where yeah, you, so, you can't pick. Right. Like, how so, is he going to turn? No, it's not bad, but I, I'm, you know, we're supposed to give you an idea of what, yeah. what would help it. All right. Uh, the next one uh, is bad. <laughs> so. This, yeah, this one's hard too. Yeah, yeah. The, like All the right. head is lost in All right. blackness. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff. We'll just unpack this one. The hair there, is All right. Gone. First off, there is actually pretty good uh, food styling, except for 
it, there's I'm not even sure what this is. Yeah. But especially because it's that straight on but, shot but, of it. But I like that they tried to style it. Yeah. There's a nice table, there's nice wood. There's the, it, it's just there's you know, you know what it is when when you're shooting a food is shot. The wood you try to keep though? it is it like does it look like it's tipping to the right? Yeah, it is tipping. It is tipping. But it's weird. It, you got your your issue really here is two things: way too much headroom. Unless this is, and you tell me this is for the cover of a magazine, then that's you have the reason way to, yeah. way too much headroom up there. It should be oh, more yeah. like that. All right, that's number one. Number two is uh, the chef is wearing a a white chef's outfit, but it is way too bright, and the lighting is is not very. It's not flattering. It's the lighting is it's way it's too a, it's way too some bright weird here. Reflections in the glasses. There's weird reflections in the glasses, and the lighting is not very flattering. Uh, one thing that you might have done uh, in a situation like this is turn the chef's shoulders. So take a look at me, right yep. uh, here, over here. Oh, over camera, here. control room. Yep, there, there we go. go. So instead of having the chef straight on, having the chef turn a little mm -hmm. bit this way would have been probably more flattering and yes, looking then back definitely. towards the camera would would have helped. Yeah, um, you need not straight. You, you kind of yeah. needed to flag her outfit. The it, it's it's really mostly a lighting. Now you could do that some of that flagging in post. You could do yeah, some of that yeah, you could, you could you could you got to be radiate, careful. Yeah, you know what the gonna, problem is? It is. You, making you, making in camera that, is so much better. Making that white yeah. Not gray. Yeah, it starts getting because it'll look murky. gray if you get if you do it in post, you're going to yeah. like if I put a it's always better gradient doing in there in camera. Yeah. This one needs a lot of work. It's just it's uh it needs a lot of work. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just and then lost into the blackness. And, like, and I wonder if lost. if you almost might have could have shot this in two games. Get one where the chef looks great, then bring in the food and use less food on that on that board. Yeah. But that that, you know, all right, and then the lastly, this one I really do like. Unfortunately, you're you're missing the rider. What this is is bull butt. Yeah, a lot of bull butt. I, but but I love that you used a a fisheye fish eye. lens. I love what it's you're trying to do. To do. Um, other thing is when I look at this thing, the first thing that I see is the number forty eight and the word Tyson. So your positioning there, if there's a word in there, we read it immediately. The 48 isn't as offensive as the Tyson. The Tyson's pretty offensive. Yeah. But the, the bull butt, I really like what you're doing there, but I would need more of the rider. His hand's cut off. His head's cut off. If you could just reframe this picture, and I'll show you one way to reframe it. Let's, and it is, let's, get, let's make as little of the Tyson visible as possible. You still have the roundness, and then you would need to go. You need frame it up higher. Yeah, you need to get like I need to see his head. That head and that and, arm. And oh, the butt is really. But well, that's what just happens but can when I you say got this? a fish eye. But but I don't want to discourage this photographer yeah. because they're trying to do good stuff. Yeah. And you've got good ideas. And the chef thing, it's it, it, the lighting's too harsh. There's a lot of things with the lighting. I love that you're doing the fisheye here. I love that you tried to get the peak moment of action. These are not all failures. These are just part of the process. They're just part of the process, and you'll Absolutely. get there. But stay with what you're doing. I love the ideas that you're doing. I, I think don't you're, worry about your camera settings, and don't worry about what lenses your that you're using. It's not that stuff. You got all the tools, yeah. obviously. Yep. You just need yep. to have that next level of yep. like not cutting off the hands, yeah. moving it at different angles, not lighting too the much lighting headroom. better. You know. Yep. But all that stuff counts. I know it all sounds like little stuff, but it's what makes the difference between yep, a great things. image. Those are the things right. that matter. And, and what I would do is for the chef shot, I, I really, I spent a lot of time on that because I think that there's potential there. Go, go and look, go to Google and type in photograph of chef and you'll find some wonderful shots of chefs. And, and, and you need to kind of have a game plan going in. How mm. am I going to light this to where the chef doesn't look overlit? The chef's not all bright here, and they're and you got to work on the shadows and stuff. But but I do want to. I, I like where you're going, and I think the next time you submit stuff, your stuff will be that next level. All right, it's break time. Uh, I, I have a little thing for you to do while we're in break. You could of course watch the commercials, but uh, Mr. Kuna and I and Mimo Madani and I are doing workshops this year on location, and we'd love to have you come with us. 
You can find out about them before the general public if you go to uh, scottkelbyworkshops.com, scroll all the way to that bottom of the page and sign up for my early advanced newsletter. That way you will know before the public. But I'm about to announce some dates for 2023. If you would like to go to an amazing place and do amazing stuff and have an incredible time, go to the bottom of the page. And there it is, a little further down. A little further down. There you go. Drop your email address in there, and then you will hear before the general public. And, you know, there's only 12 spots for these workshops. Once they're gone, they're gone. So um, we'd love to have you come and join us. We're, we've got some great locations, and it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of neat stuff. And that's coming up in 2023. So go get on that, on that email list so I can let you know before the public. Okay, now let's take a short break. When we come back, let's look at a whole bunch more pictures. If you're thinking of traveling and using the iPhone as your camera, or if you're thinking of using it as your second camera when you travel, you gotta check out my brand new class on shooting travel with the iPhone. One of the great things about the iPhone, besides it's very lightweight and you're already carrying it anyway and it's connected to the internet and all that stuff, there are certain things that you can do on your phone that are actually much easier and much more fun to do on your phone than it is to do on your mirrorless or your DSLR. There are so many advantages. And what I'm gonna do in this class is, we're gonna start off by going through a bunch of different camera settings. I wanna get you set up with your camera for maximum success when you do travel. Then, after that, we're going out on location. We're in the beautiful Tuscany region of Italy. We're gonna go in town, we're gonna go on location, and you're gonna see it all done. Now that's part one. I got a part two where we'll do all the post-processing as well. Come with me to Tuscany so I teach you how to use your iPhone to get the best travel pictures you've gotten with a phone in your entire life. People won't believe you took those photos with a phone. So come and join me for my new class on travel photography using your iPhone. Have you ever had a client that wants you to recreate different images? Well, come join my class, and in this class you'll learn different tips on how to recreate those inspirational images. Because at some point in your career you will get asked to recreate lighting from someone else's images. And now you gotta go and dissect that image and figure out the lighting for it. So what we'll do in this class, we'll go over how to dissect the images, the gear we use, modifiers we use, camera settings, and to just kind of guide you through the process so you can make a bunch of money. So you should come check this class out. Come join me in my latest class at kelbyone.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, everybody, we are back, Scott and Eric. And uh, you know what it's time for? A new feature that we added yes, at the end of last new year. Feature. It's time where every episode we're now doing a, either a Lightroom or a Photoshop tip. Today, it's a Photoshop tip. Photoshop tip, yeah. All right, All yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So take a look on screen here. We've got a picture shot in the studio shot right around the corner, right over here, next room over. And a uh, little fall shot, off of the little light. Fall off, yeah, a little fall off of the light. light we were talking about before. And then you, the shirt's I, not as bright. You can see some of the light. This is just a one light shot. It's just one big, uh, like 53 inch softbox to her right. And I let some of the light hit the background, but I didn't light the background. So this trick is how to light the background after the fact, like you put a light there, like you ah, put a flash nice. there. And you're going to use the camera raw filter. So you're going to go to filter and just choose camera raw. 
or you can open it in camera raw either way here's what you're going to do you're going to click on the mask icon mm. and you're going to make your you're going to make your um what do you call it uh, light in the background using a radial gradient so the circular gradient and you're going to draw it wherever you want it to why isn't it drawing <laughs> wow hold on it's just like my 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 what you call it uh yeah it just trackpad uh, didn't draw so you're going to draw you. oh my gosh it's doing it again yeah, it's like freezing it's up like on freezing, you. It's like freezing. Why is that? Let me let me quit it and open it again and see if that did it. You know, sometimes... Hey, sometimes it's called Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop just does weird stuff. Let's hope this fixed it. Masking, radial gradient, draw... There we go. Yeah, all there, right. There it so works. You, all right, so you draw... And that's what we call Photoshop. That's what we call Photoshop. All right. So that's going to be the spotlight, all right? And then I can control how bright the spotlight is using the exposure slider. Now, so that's like, you can see it on the background, God, right? Her face looks blown out. Now. But her face is kind of blown out. Here's the trick. All right. You're going to go to the word subtract. And by the way, if you don't see this add and subtract buttons, just click up here on the mask and it'll pop, they'll pop down. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't see them, yeah. they're hidden away. Just click and they'll pop it down. You're going to click on subtract. So I have this big circle. There's something in it I don't want her. So what you're going to do is go select subject. Now, remember, I hit subtract. So I'm going to subtract my subject. subject from that circle. And now the spotlight is behind her. And I can either control it and make it brighter. I can actually go down here and actually put a gel on it, change the color of the spotlight, and all that kind of stuff just by... Yeah, dragging anything around. Dragging anything. anything. Yeah. At that point. It's so a, you can make it brighter lighter. or wider or whatever you want. But there you have it. That's how to add a spotlight after the fact using the masking tool. And that's our Photoshop tip. Yeah. And that Photoshop tip applies to Photoshop and Lightroom because in Lightroom, it works you can in do the Lightroom same exactly thing. the same, same way. Thing. Exactly the same way. All right, let's get on to some just images. Would what do you in say? The develop module. Let's see it would difference. be in the develop module. Let's go look at some people's photos, shall we? Uh, here we go. Let's look at these. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's actually it, pretty that's nice. What I think it's more like oh, at least we got the one out of three ain't bad. Yeah. So th this is just kind of a shot of nothing. I know what you're drawn to. I can There's see some it. Some pattern. Boom, 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 you boom, you yeah. really like the clouds. Yeah. You see a great sky, and you're like, hey, the sky's great. Let's get this sky. Unfortunately, what's in front of you is kind of ugly. And ugh. This one this one is the total curveball of curveballs. It's crooked. It's not framed. Yeah, it's, the color's funky. Yeah, the color, it looks like right. dreary kind of. Look, ugh. I know that when you look at this shot, you're looking at the sky and going, look at that sky. But we see all of it. And it's crooked. The color's bad. And we it, can't tell the like, moment. We can't tell if there was thunderstorms going on yeah. or if and, and it what's was the, like And what is the subject perfect. here? Is it the, is it the ground in front? Is it whatever that stuff is the next? Well, that's what they had a foreground, a middle ground, a background, but there's nothing interesting in either yeah, there, one of them. You don't them. have a subject. And if the most interesting thing is your clouds, you're in trouble. Yeah. The clouds are the icing on the cake. Yes. The now, clouds are the icing. Occasionally, I have seen someone compose the shot to where... But yours is is like 60-40 ugly foreground, 40% nice sky. Uh, and so, and, and yeah, when you say nice sky, it's it's, it's a, not a killer it's sky. It's not a killer no, sky. It's, it's if you had composed okay this like a pan, like, oh gosh, let me unlock this. Like a pano. Let's just say that you had, and it was all about the clouds. Well, then I could go, okay, this is a cloud yeah, shot. but still. I know. It's, it's, it's not happening. It's a stretch. It's not happening. This isn't happening. Yeah. This is pretty nice because you and got it. That better. was actually, if you look at it, it's the same place. Look at the rocks yeah. in front. Look yeah. at the, so that's the difference. Is, but this is really good. That's good. It's over-processed. It is. It has it's glows everything's, and halos. Yeah, everything's like too crunchy and too, you know, like you, you just went overboard on all of the sharpening and clarity and texture. Well, what and it looks so like. those were the clouds you were looking to capture in the other two. But you actually, if you look at the other two, they're way drearier and, and just yeah, this not is, as epic. Like Right, but this is nice. I like that you did nice. the pano. Uh, you've got foreground. Can you show like where they overcooked it? Like if you zoom in, like 
if you could see like the edges where you overcooked it. Yeah, well, like, that's I can't do any further. Yeah, it won't the let other me. Thing. All right, well, and I, then there's actually a stitching problem I can see from here, or it looks like a. Well, you got a problem. glow on the horizon. Yeah, you got. The you have glow a glow around, around the, rock. the rocks, a little white line. See the little like it's like you traced it with a white pen. Yeah, that's just from adding too much. Um, clarity or there's a lot of noise and stuff in the sky it's just over processed it's overcooked and that's what we mean like you just yeah, just yeah see the glow around the yeah, the fort or whatever everywhere. that is so all right however we're not letting you off the hook because you were capable of making a very good picture we can see this yeah what happened to the first two what are the this is two? good this is good. A, yeah there's I mean, a little you, post could, stuff. you could cook you could cook it a little less yeah but that's so, where yeah. it's like where where were you like where are the other two photos like i don't know yeah all right so you you're capable of taking a good photo you've taken a good photo there's some post issues but those those are fixable because the one in the middle is just Ooh. really crooked like yeah it was really, really crooked weird. and it was just kind of weird and just like yeah all right so do more of that do more of this and do less of those less others. others and you got to ask yourself those questions what's the subject all right, is this beautiful? Is this interesting? Is it going to make anybody go, wow, this picture? That's pretty wow. Like, I could see somebody going, oh, I love this shot. I cannot see anyone saying that about the first two. Like, I could see someone buying this print. You'll you'll hold on to those other ones for a long time. And I time. bet if you take that kind of same kind of, like, atmosphere tone with an image, and like, you'll do better with these type of images than the other two. All right. You say yeah. uh, some shout-outs. I'm going to get the next picture ready. Yeah, so we've got... Uh, Pee Wee saying hi to the Kelby One team. Uh, Bill saying hi from Sacramento. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Bill. And then Dwight in Tennessee saying hi. Um, we'll take some time getting used to 2023 as the, the year. Yep, it always does in the beginning of the year, yeah, right? Yeah, And then uh, Deb saying Happy New Year and thanks for the V-flats. They're awesome. Well, glad that you enjoyed those, Deb. And then Henrik is saying hi from Germany. Alice saying hi from Paris. Jim saying hi from Maplewood, Minnesota. James saying uh, hello. John Duke saying hi from Maryland. Uh, Janelis from Texas. Kendra from the Snowpocalypse 3 in South Snow Dakota. Apocalypse. <laughs> and then uh, Bay saying hi from Loxahatchee, Florida. Loxahatchee. Cool. All right. And then Graham, Graham all the way from, from Malta. Malta. All right. There we go. Let's move on. Let's look at another one. Oh, nice. This is nice. Yeah. It's that they actually nailed the like composition and the yeah, right yeah, lens yeah. and the and where yeah. to put the camera. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This All is right. another one. Okay. So th this one, I think you 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 pretty much nailed it. Pretty there's much. a little bit of a horizontal yeah, there's a um, skew. There's a little yeah, bit of a, a horizontal skew. skew in it. In other words, when you're doing shots like this, you got to really take uh, care Oof. to shoot right in the exact center, right? And Eric's been with me when we're shooting in places we're like that. Like, move, and Eric's like, like oh, one inch. move over another inch to the left, you know, like because you think you're in the center. We'll blow and, it up and see. And you're and not. Like, and then no, your photo comes off. out and it's like off. It's like and then the other thing by is a little, like you'll be in these way. churches that were built four, five, six hundred years ago. Yep. They're all crooked to begin with. So it's yeah. hard to find those center spots. Yeah. All right. But there's a bigger problem with all of these photos. And it, it is you're pushing the vibrance too far. They're too colorful. They're all three of them are just the colors, like especially this one. The color looks oh, unrealistic. Yeah, that one is cooked it beyond just, belief. Yeah, yeah. So it's just and and you can see the look at you have a big white glow, you have the glow going on the side all of the, the way around this all over here. Yeah, the, the purple everywhere. the purple color looks weird. Uh, now, if you said Scott, that was the exact color I was there, and I would say to that's, you, then you better that's change pushing it. Pushing your shadows too much. Yeah, yeah, this, this yeah. It's it's funky. Noise. So first thing you need to do is just go and lower your vibrance on all of these photos. Just lower them to where yeah, it right starts there. to look right like they're made know. a lot better. <laughs> yeah. So I want to put them side by side so you can see how punchy that color was. Same thing in the, in the, in the cathedral, which is beautiful shot, really. I mean, everything else you you did have but done. This one, this one's probably but, the but, least offensive. Right. It is, them. but it needs to be back like yeah, this. There. Yeah. Some somewhere there. It was. It's just too punchy. Now, if you were trying to sell it as a print, eh, it'd probably be fine. People love. 
you know, the public loves colorful stuff, but you didn't send it into the public show. You sent it into the photography show and it's like, uh, uh, all right. Okay. Let's see. Um, Malcolm asked in your critique in your last critique show. So not this show, but a previous one. Yeah. He said, my photos look like they were taken by three different photographers. Is that good or bad? That's bad. I think it's bad too. I think it's bad. And, and here's why it means you don't have a style. There's nothing about it that says you. It's you don't like have you, a unique. You look. handed your camera to one person, they took a yeah. shot. You handed it to somebody else, they took a shot. Hand it to the else. If you don't have a style, you're you're never going to develop into any anything. You're just like you're taking random photos. It could be Eric takes a with, shot, with, hands me the with, camera, I hand it to a random. With that said, when you're starting out, there is a lot of you are um, iterating or kind of copying what other people are doing. So you are going to have sometimes, like, for example, yeah. I remember a couple of weeks ago, we had one where I went, uh, oh, that looks like Rami. That looks like Rami's shot. Well, yeah. the guy was on Rami's workshop. Well, obviously, yeah. it's going <laughs> to look like Rami's shot. Yep. So that's where it is. It's like you're going to have those times when you're starting out, especially, where that's going to happen. But mm -hmm. you want to eventually develop your own look or your own style yes. that you don't yes. have that. So yes. that's where it's not bad in the sense if you're starting out, it's not yeah, everybody's bad. Got to kind of everybody's got to go through that process, but to to get to that next level, you really want to define your look, right? Like, so. and we mentioned Rami. You, if if Ram, if picture comes up in my feed, I don't even have to look at the name. I go, that's a Rami. That's a Joe McNally. Like, that's know? what you want. You can see these the and people have their own style. If it just looks like every shot you take was taken by another random person, why would anybody ever go to you for anything? I'll just hand it to the next guy. Yeah. Like you got to get your, you got to find your foot. Hey, this is the last photo here. Yeah. This is really not bad either. Um, it's just, unfortunately, it, it looks, it, if you don't look carefully, you don't even see the head of the duck. Yes. Right. So, but, but can I say this? Most of the, what's going on here is just a little bit too much post-processing. And this one, of course, you know, I would like well, to see that's that. Well, that's with wildlife photography. Is the, the nice part uh, to look for when your sequence of images, which might be just on a half fast enough frame rate, is looking for when the wings were higher up or the wings were lower down. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, so you see and more that's of that you separation. See that separation. Yeah. So it's just that bad timing. Okay. But but let's just pretend for a moment that we see a perfect shot of yep. of the bird's head. What you would have is a sharp, purposely exposed picture of a duck. Yep. Flying over water. Was it a duck doing something really unique? Was it a duck with a fish in its mouth? Was it a duck doing something really interesting? No, it's like, yeah, it's a duck. It's a good picture of a duck. But it, it, at the end of the day, uh, like this is the kind of shower people go, ooh, where was that? Ooh, ooh. And they look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a sunset. <gasps> that's a duck. So let's well, move that's on. What, yeah, getting close with wildlife photography, just like sports photography it's helps. A, that's Putting a duck. something in the background. All, those all right, two. let's take a look at these three photos now. These Holy were, wide angle. Wait a minute. These were sent. <laughs> these were sent to me as raw, unretouched images. So these were okay, raw, these right out of, the out of the camera. All right. Holy wide angle. So this looks exactly, and this may even be the the uh, the back of the castle where my wife and I got engaged thirty four years ago. Wow. Uh, in the in the countryside of England, it looks just like it. But anyway, may, whether it is or it isn't. So this one. I, I like what you're seeing. You're just seeing a bit too much. Yeah. So I mean, let's just, let's go crop in when you way. when you shoot at that. That's a wide angle. That's like definitely like 16, 18 millimeters. Yeah. Or something. And that is a that is a great and wonderful lens. But here's what you a, have to. You, here's what a wide angle about. lens does. It pushes. It it takes the the scene in front of you and it pushes it away. And so, unfortunately, when you use a super wide angle, like a 16 or something, and I could actually go find the raw photo and look, this is a JPEG. But when you use the super wide angle, you need something in the foreground, like something mm -hmm. interesting. Like yep. there needed to be like a piece of driftwood or a rock or something right in the front to kind of take you into the photo. So we're cropping in here, and I think we can actually crop in even tighter. Well, and I think that's where, with that shot, you would probably a 50 millimeter, 70 millimeter. That would have been like it would. A have 24 been, would have been 24 fine. 24 would have been fine. But if you would have got in a little closer, got that separation. All right. And then between, I'm just going to hit the auto button just so we have some kind right of a starting there, place. You've done a lot to make the photo better. Yeah, just you. You have a very interesting uh, rock formation there, 
and uh, it's it looks like a peninsula or something. It yeah. looks very nice. Yeah. And, and I'm not post processing it and all. I just hit the auto button. But but even even just there, you know, you're look at just hitting that auto button. But again, you sent in raw photos, which is totally fine. They're unprocessed. Maybe you would have done these things. But uh, that's just you know my my impressions on that are we just need to get closer. Of course. Also, for anybody in the future, you don't want to send in your raw photos. You want to send in finished photos. Yeah, send photos in your, your best because photos. Because you never want to show anybody your raw photos. Yeah. No. They're raw for a reason. No. They're unprocessed. It'd be like no. handing somebody a meal with like raw chicken and saying, like, eat this. Yeah. It's like, well, I'd rather you throw it on the grill for a little while and cook it. All right. So th this is another shot I think that has a lot of potential. It's actually your composition isn't bad. Um, I it, it the image itself looks better. a bit yeah. bowed, so I would go to the optics and and I don't know what kind of camera you use, but put in some kind of a, I'm gonna guess a Canon, and then use this distortion to kind of it's. Do you notice it's bowed? Yeah, it's bowed up. The distortion's not moving anything. Well, and that's another reason why with these type of shots, using a wider angle manual? lens does not help you in a landscape, because the I wider think I kind of need to go about like there. Things. Maybe, and then we can crop it in some more. In fact, I'd crop it in some more anyway. Uh, the, the most important, interesting part of these rock is like kind of over this way. So then you just hit auto to kind of get us going. But yeah, like, there's I a like, lot you can I do like here. I like the scene in the last one. I like the, the length, you know, like. And maybe a little dehaze to kind of. Yeah. And then open up the shadows because the rocks. You know, anyway, it wouldn't take you a whole lot of processing to get to something decent. You can start to see a glow showing up, so you have to deal yeah, with that. Yeah. And, and maybe that'll be my tip next week is how to deal with glows because it's, yeah. it's glow day on the grid. But uh, anyway, there's this has got potential. We could take out that boat too. Yeah, that boat. That, yeah, this boat over here. It's got to go. It's got to go. And your last one, uh, it's it's okay. It's this looks like a picture that you want to put like you want to have to say this is where we stayed. This is a good for like a photo book. Yeah, this would be good like, you know, like yeah. a and travel book. You have a lot of grass over here on the right. Whoops. That is that is not necessary. This isn't about that tree and it's not about the grass. It's about the hotel or the castle or whatever it is. So you don't need all that. And you could use some uh, geometry. Geometry, there we go, that's better, much, much better. And we'll hit the auto button just to bring this clarity to the situation. Uh oh, we're in trouble now. Anyway, no, I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll let it go. Um, but you can see just, you know, three, three or four clicks and you're in a little bit better shape. But again, I'm not going to count. They sent in a raw photo. I'm not yeah, going to, who knows what they would have yeah. done with it. All of these photos, I think, have potential to, to actually... Do the post processing, yep. go through the process, and, and make them pretty good. Uh, so really, I can't criticize your post processing because you didn't do any. Um, but I think there's a couple things you can do to make these pictures stronger. But I, I think you get a good eye. I think you're on your way. Now, unless it's unless you are only using raw files, in that case, we will criticize your post processing. Yeah, you gotta you have to process your raw photos. Hey, we're gonna take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we got more stuff. More stuff. What if you could hire an extra set of hands just to deal with editing your photos? And what if this assistant was thinking and editing exactly like you? With Imagine, this is not a distant dream. Introducing your new personalized AI Lightroom Classic Editing Assistant. It analyzes your unique editing style down to the very last detail and applies that style instantly and uniquely to every new photo from your Adobe Lightroom catalogs. Whether it's color correction, cropping, or straightening, Imagine's AI Assistant knows what needs to be done based on your previous edits. The AI constantly learns your unique point of view and improves. With just a few clicks, Imagine edits your photos in your personal style faster than ever. It takes less than half a second per photo at all volumes. Now you can finally have the time to scale up your business and win back free time. In addition to creating your own personal AI profile, you can also use one of our pre-built talent AI profiles. If you are uncertain about your unique style or just want to explore the signatory styles of leading photographers, 
your new AI assistant is here to deliver. Achieve amazing results right from the first frame and maintain the highest level of precision in each and every photo. Starting at only a few cents per photo, you get fantastic value for your money and save hours of work. So say goodbye to hours of tedious manual editing and to presets that distort your photos and under deliver. And say hello to the future. Hey, Eric Kuna here, and I'm here with the new Canon R7. We're taking this through its paces. We're out here at an air show. We're gonna put it through a real world example, show you how this camera performs actually out shooting an event. Right? This is what this camera is designed for. Peak action, we want telephoto, we want to be in on the action. We're going to put this through its paces, figure out what it can do, what it can't do, any highlights it has. These are the type of images that you can produce with this camera. We're going to see if there's any things that we need to address with it. And then we're going to actually take it back into the studio and we're going to go through all the buttons all the dials, the menu system, explain what everything is, so you're up to speed on how to make the most out of the Canon R7. So join me on this class on the new Canon R7 at KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. <laughs> hey -oh! Okay, so we are back, Mr. Kuna, and I and... Uh, Let's take a look at some Blind more images. Critiques. Blind critiques. Here we go. Well, that's a sky. Yeah, that's pretty. That's very pretty. That's pretty. Very pretty. It's starting to push it on the vibrance, but it's close. Oh, now that, what that's, happened here? Whoa. That's definitely pushing on the vibrance. Okay, all right. This is a very vibrant photo, but I can buy it. I, I don't. Buy I'm it. not buying this one. No, that's no. That oh, you know what? That that starts uh, getting into like oh. like there's an apocalypse coming with like radiation yeah. poisoning. This is like just, we're all dying. <laughs> <laughs> this is just, you're just pushing the color too far. Um, and it's, it's a nice if, shot. If it's the got sky a nice ever reflection. starts looking like that, run. Run, <laughs> run. All right, we, There's yeah. There's fallout coming. Yeah, you got to pull that way back. It just doesn't, it doesn't look real. I think it was Serge Remily uh, who said uh, that, you know, if your colors don't look like they're really in nature, you know, it just, it's, it's distracting. And so... So this is, I'll show you the difference here. Let me split them. Look how vibrant that was on the left. It's just, it's just kind of over the top, which is bad because your other stuff is, is pretty good. Uh, the, uh, this one over here, yeah. I really like that. And it's I vibrant. Really, really like this. I would remove some distracting things. Yeah, under down the bridge. here under the bridge, you know, these sticks aren't helping. Yeah. That stick, these sticks. And that goes for the second picture as well. There's some distracting stuff. Yeah, we can get this rid one's of nice, there. but but why would you leave that big leaf going right across uh, the body? Or that leaf up and the, the leaf top up right. in the top right. Like I understand if you want to leave one in to add some like interest, but the. Um, the leaf going across the body's not happening. The leaf up in the top right corner is not happening. Yeah, we can uh, lose those. Yeah, you can lose those. But these are, I mean, they're all pretty good. They're, you know, they're nice shots. Uh, yeah, I particularly just... like that one. Yep. This is nice with a little bit of cleanup. Clean up. This is nice with a little bit of uh, the vibrance removed. Yep. So, you know, Cooking not, not bad. Hey, we just heard that uh, RC, RC Concepcion is in the chat. Hey, RC. Hey, RC what's How's up? RC, RC's cold. Oh, I'm sure. Well, maybe not so bad now, but he was up in Buffalo, right? Oof. Oh, my goodness. It's cold up there. Stay warm, RC. It's good to see you here. All right. Let's roll over to... Oh, we saw those. You got to get that timer out, Mr. Kuhn. I'm talking too much. Here we go. Let's take a look. Ooh, that's nice. With one New thing... <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Let's just go on. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. All right, right here. I love the composition. I love where you shot it from. Mr. Kuna, what did he do that is so that happens so often on the grid when we when we criticize a long exposure photo? It's just not long enough. It's not long enough. You and gotta use you like a 10 that, stop or a 12 stop. You're still seeing stop. that texture in the water. Yeah, that should be like glassy, the, like the smoke. problem is that's probably under 30 seconds. And yep. you need to be longer. Yeah, you need to be three and minutes. And you're going to have to stack ND filters to do that during the daytime. But I like your black and white conversion a lot. 
There's a lot to like here. Yes. Um, but uh, that longer exposure, you'd have had a killer shot. It's a good shot. You would have had a killer shot. Pretty good, though. I like this one, too. Uh, very, very famous uh, Instagram spot. Oh, yeah. I like that you don't have all the Instagram people in there. And you have interesting light on the bridge, which is good. I love your low perspective. Well done. Uh, this one's well done. It actually looks a little too bright. Yeah. Well, well, eh, it, it does look a yeah. little bright. I might, I might just pop down the either the whites or just the exposure altogether, just a little bit. Oh, I went too far. Too far. There you go. But anyway, I like it. I like I'm, my favorite are the are the earlier two, but these are all nice. Good job. Good job. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. Who's next in our whirlwind campaign? Oh, we already saw this one. Uh, let's go to these. Here we go. All right. This is a terrific, mm -hmm. terrific shot. It's crooked. We're going to fix that. And it's kind of an unfortunate crop. We're going to fix both of those because this is such a good shot. This is great. It is crooked. You don't want the field to be crooked. And look, just by rotating it, we're fixing kind of the bottom yeah, problem. Yeah, we're fixing the bottom problem, too. All right, yeah. There we go. So you were, when you get close to, like, a, a wrist, it becomes an uncomfortable yeah, place like to, to crop. So you, you want to go up a little further, which we did in the yeah, crop. You just want but to can amputate I tell you something? at a better spot. This is such a great shot. It's not an action shot, obviously. But his smile is so genuine and it's it's like you got great separation from the background. Uh, it, it's great really lighting, great lighting, great color. It's yeah. just that is such 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 a good shot. So congratulations, really nicely done. That little tweak right there will make it even better. Um, this is nice. It's a you know a, a seagull. Hey, you did the right thing with small birds. You got down real low. Got real low. And that's what you got to do. And look how the the foreground's out of focus in the front, which is correct. Then you've got the very sharp bird. You got nice. This is this person really knows what they're doing camera yeah, wise and those photography are hard shots. wise. Those you also have got shots. lots of negative space, which is nice. Yeah. And then this is my least, least favorite, favorite because too. when you look at it, you gotta kind of figure out what's going on. You're like, oh, I see the horse is turning his head back towards it because it almost looks like a horse's head's coming out of the other horse's butt well, when you kinda, first look it, at it. it yeah, it kind of is. It's like. A, it, it's it's just playing with your mind too much. Yeah, and you don't know what it's doing. Right. So then you're kind of like offended by it. Right. But the photography part of it is is right on the money. Like your photography is on the money. So keep up the great work. And it's really nice to see some nice photos. So we've been yeah, struggling. Awesome. We've been struggling through some here. And uh, oh, it does look good. Oh, here we go. Oh, these are lovely. Yeah. These are great all the way around. Great post it's amazing how you can just see the little and go up. Oh, you can, yeah, you see them. There. Good. These are really nicely done. You've got interesting subjects that are giving you something. They're not just staring dead into the photo. They're not blank. The lighting is really nice. Yeah, there's your an post processing. Your uh, color grading is really really nice. These are beautiful. They're beautifully composed. The lighting's good. Good She's giving off. you a great smile. She's giving you a great look. The The only thing that I, uh, and I'm just going to be nitpicking right, just on get, this one. Let's get nitpicking. If you could have her turn her head, this is split lighting. You have one side of her face lit and the other side really isn't lit. If you could ever turn her head, so look at me. If you could ever turn her head just a little bit, that light coming in would hit the cheek over here. And this is so minor. It's really not bad. Split lighting is a legitimate kind of lighting, but you know. I would have ha preferred to have a little, like you see there's a little more light on her face here, how it spills over onto the cheek on the right side of the picture. Yeah. I would yeah. have liked to seen a little more light spilled over. You could actually do that in post very easily. In fact, let's do that in post. Uh, I would just go to the masking. But again, that yeah, I'm with get it. a it's brush. Like, it's like nit like nitpicking. Nitpicking because it's such a good photo. And just add a little more light yeah. right over That's there. Right. Just a little bit more like somewhere in there and i guess you'd have to do up here too that whole side yeah. and you know, i'll put them side by side it's not going to be that a night and day difference Let's see if i can get rid of that uh, let me just close this so you don't see the icon right it's just a little bit more light on that side which is easy to impose these are wonderful though honestly, your color grading is great mm -hmm. i really congratulations yes. let's go really nice nice stuff 
Nice stuff. Nice. Cooking it. Uh oh. Oh my gosh, it's overcooked Cooking your it. images on the grid day. Cooking. All right, so this is beautiful Prague uh, in the Czech Republic. I did a workshop there last year, and I know right where you took this shot. It's a great spot, but you are, you are just overcooking these. You are overprocessing these to death. Especially that one. Yeah, your ceiling looks dirty. So you, what yours, yours it looks like you're either using a plug-in or you're using uh, a too much clarity and it's giving you that those dark areas that's it's just way over processed you got it's glows actually, on the this floor one's also doing this where it's yeah and it's tilted like the whole room like, like the whole room is kind of yeah so these are just way overcooked even this one this is the least overcooked and your sky looks funky your clouds have drop shadows it, you're just way overcooking this stuff literally Take it back by like 40% or 50% from where you are, yeah. and, and there you go. Yep, 42%. Yep, 42%. <laughs> All right, that's it. The photography's fine. The photography's fine, and, and you, you put yourself in good places. You had good stuff to shoot, yeah, and the, then you the, destroyed the, the, the it with post -processing, your post-processing. Like you're you killed taking it. that filet and just like yep. you killed put it, it on the grill for an hour. Put it on the grill for an hour and then oversalting it. Yep. Oh, no, look at this. Oh, that's oh nice. is that a nice photo? I'm going to fix it for you, though. That's nice. It's really, this is about the reflection, but it's pretty nice. Very nice. Here's what we're going to do. This is such a wonderful photo that we're going that's to. That's a wonderful one. It's wonderful. And it crop would, it. We're going to crop it. Exactly. Yep. There you go. Money. Money. What a great shot. You need to enter that one. Yeah, that's that's an enter it in competition photo. That's After you crop it. And they've done everything right, guys. They have the the expression from the bird. <laughs> the bird's looking right in. Everything is sharp and crisp. Um, there's a little bit of motion on the wings to make it look like that the that it is flying. And then you've got that wonderful yep. separation from the background. All the color works together. This is everything is right in this photo. It's very, very nicely done. Yeah, 100 now, to 500 at 500. Yep, this one's really nicely done. I really like it. It looks a little crooked. It looks like it's a little lean. Yeah, it is leaning. It's leaning. You know how we feel about that stuff. Yeah. All right. Just a little bit. Yep, it was leaning a little bit, but I like the color. Like the color's nice in this photo. If you could see it, it, it would be it's even a, nicer. It's, it's a pleasing photo, right? <laughs> Did you lose my computer? Did it go away? Did it come unplugged? There we there go. go. Um, yeah, it's like a pleasing tone. Well, um, you know what it is? What's nice? Normally, so this they were shooting an auto white balance, right? And on this side of the of the birds, they're in the shadow, so it's blue. And then the other side, people go in color grade to get that. <laughs> and, it, and you got it in nature. And I lovely, lovely reflections. And I love the way you composed it. I mean, this photographer is shooting lights out. And then, uh, and that's a, that's a, that's a uh, compliment. This is the only one that this is n super nicely done. I would just clean up the ground a little bit. There, is there's that more. One leaning too? It is leaning. Yes, yeah, it's there. there leaning. It's absolutely leaning. So let's go. It's the. the it's leaning. Listing. There you go. That's it. it needs All right. That. Now you just gotta. It doesn't need that much junk in the water, and I think that you want to leave some so it's obvious where the water line is. But. Uh, Beautiful, Still a great, great, shot. really great well shots. done, really that good stuff. That owl one is. Perfect. Oh, that owl is just killer. Well done, yeah. beautiful. All right, we have to take a short break. We got more images to look at. Oh, we got a good one coming up next. What? All right.
I'm Karen Hutton. Join me as we go chasing fall color in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains of California to make amazing images of this incredible time of year. I'm going to share with you everything I can come up with out of my years of experience photographing this incredibleness in this beautiful part of the world to hopefully save you some time and energy when you want to shoot the glorious colors of autumn wherever you are in the world. I'll share tricks like understanding how fall color starts at the highest elevation and works its way down and what that timing is all about. We'll talk about planning, we'll talk about preparing, we'll talk about gear, we'll talk about lenses, the, the actual nitty gritty about how to shoot some of it as well as how to tell a story how to walk away with a book of your experiences, how to use color play. We'll talk about the detailed shots, the mid shots, the big epic shots. We're gonna share a lot with you and I'm not holding anything back. So join me for my latest class and best adventure ever at kelby1.com. Hey guys, I'm Tubby and I'm gonna show you two really cool products that we at B Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double-sided hyper-realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently. And they also, there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or, or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, we're back, Scott and Eric. And um, hey, so I have some news. So you guys have heard me talking about that my wife got me for Christmas a trip to Qatar, mm -hmm. or Americans would pronounce it Qatar. Qatar. But uh, anyway, I've decided not to go. <laughs> All right. This is going to sound Why so. Why have you decided not to? It's going to sound so stupid, right. but you know how, like on the weekend, I you know you go to BuzzFeed and these different websites yeah, yeah, that yeah. are just for entertainment, and this one had like the, the top one hundred most beautiful places, you know. Yeah. And I started looking through the list because I'm always looking for something, and like four of the things on this list were from the same country, and I thought to myself, I'm going to go to Qatar and I'm going to get some some like cool architecture shots. But it won't be very travely, and I'm really into travel photography. Yeah, there'll there'll be like different buildings you don't normally see. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking maybe I should go to this other place where these. And I, I wrote down six cities that are out total. Maybe That's it's actually a good way to do on. it when you're planning is yeah. is not in looking like if I'm going to an area. Right. Is there enough to shoot in that area? I'm going to tell you how many were on this list. Hold on, I have it right here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right, so I changed where I'm going, and I'm going to go in, I think, I think March. This is just me and my brother, because I haven't bought the tickets yet, luckily. I'm going to go to, ready? You're going to be so jealous, but you can come if you want. I'm going to go to Switzerland. Oh, nice. And I'm going to go to all those places. I'm going to go to Zermatt, and I'm going to go, but I have a list of places of some Interlaken and some yeah, other yeah, places. Yeah. I know what I'm going to go about. to some of these places. Because Switzerland's easy and small to get around. You can drive there because yeah. it's the same side of the road. And um, that's where I'm going. I'm going to go to Switzerland. Well, right there. That's, that's, I'm in. If we drive on the right side of the road. Right the side, of the road. side of the road. If, anyway, I'm not, go, going, not going to a country. You can go. It's just me and my bro. So and Eric, unless Dave Eric Williams is driving you around, I ain't entering one of those countries. Yeah. If Dave Williams, like we drove all over <laughs> Scotland, Dave Williams, he's a great driver. <laughs> he's, he's a trained driver. It's so weird when you're driving around there. It's like your mind 
like constantly it's like you're on the wrong side of the road yeah like you come around the corner you're like whoa and you're like oh that's right we're supposed to be here no all right we gotta look at some more images uh hey we asked a couple of questions so eric asked a different eric not eric yep says what is the rule for removing distracting items what's the best routine for doing this without leaving remnants so eric there there is not a hard fast rule because photography is an art (laughs) there's not a rule Mm -hmm. uh i can say this uh, and, and, you know, Henry Matisse, uh, the famous painter, had a really great saying, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing when I tell you this, but he said, if something in your photograph is not adding to it, it's taking away from it. Like when you look at those sticks in the water, like Eric and I, we we're just looking at that picture of the of the bird. Bird the, and the sticks going And you're over like, the body. you know, the sticks on the other side, you know, you could say, well, that adds a little bit of ambiance. This stick going across the body, this stick up here, they are not adding. So... My rule would be, if it's not adding to the photo, I take it out. Now, I have an entire class on this, Eric. I'm not trying to pitch on a class, but I'm going to. I have a whole class called Removing Distracting Elements from Your Photos. It is an entire class of every technique that you can imagine. I mean, I go through everything, and I've got some good stuff in there. I'll tell you, it's almost all Photoshop. Photoshop is where you go to remove stuff. It is a Photoshop class. But if you go to Kelby One, even if you're not a member, you can just buy that one class. What is it, 29 bucks? 19. 19. 19 bucks. It's cheap. It's dirt cheap. Go get my class on removing distraction stuff, and you'll know how to do everything. But what's nice about it is you can also go back, and you go right to the thing you want to do, right? You don't have to, like, watch it. You know, it's, it's all these different lessons named by what we're removing. So if you go, oh, there's an extra window, or I need to extend a wall, or, you know, whatever it is, it'll tell you what to do anyway it's it's, a, it's a, i don't want to tout my own class but i think it's pretty good and there's the other side of this too is you can do a lot too is as you see as you get as you evolve as a photographer to see the distracting stuff before you even take yes. the photo so then that's much better i mean yes you sometimes you can't sometimes like you're like oh this yeah this is the and because i do photojournalism a lot and that's where sometimes you just cannot remove poles and wires yep and you, it's just and, and if you're doing photojournalism it's dangerous to remove it yeah photojournalism is different yeah we're talking you're about not gonna art. but photography you can do as much as you can to remove it but then you're gonna have to use the techniques that and, Scott it, does, talks and about. it doesn't hurt to reach out there and move stuff in real life too it's it's much i would much rather walk over and remove a beer can from my photo than have to try to remove the beer can in photoshop Oh, yeah. I'm constantly picking up trash. all right let's look at some more images i love these next set i love them love them that's a dog. He got that dog on him. Look at that dog. Oh, that's the same dog. That got the dog. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good dog. All right. Well, dog pictures are always nice. All right. These, I think, are are very They're well close. photographed. They're, They're close. nice and close and intimate. They, you, you unfortunately have two things wrong. They are, they're overlit. So yeah. they look what we call flashy. Flashy. I, that dog is supposed to be lit. It's not supposed to look like you lit it with flash. You know what I mean? It's like you, you don't this want. Is, it's a, it's a. There's a fine line here. Yeah. And that's what like uh, we who's perfected this is Kelly Greer. Yeah, and this is looks she, like Kelly Greer. It looks style. like it's almost Kelly Greer. It's just yeah. Kelly, Kelly oh, Greer. Yeah. With a little too much flash. Right. Kelly Greer would have lit it just right, and she would not take a look at the shot. Would not have cut off that paw on the that front. Paw. Wouldn't have cut off that paw here. <coughs> right? But paw look at you got you're doing a good job with fall off. It's just all too bright. So, like for instance, let's look at this photo. What can you do now that you've overlit it? But turn your flash down. Just turn your flash down. down. I would go and take your whites down, take your highlights down, and believe it or not, this one works wonders. Take your blacks down. Now, what you might want to do is just say, select the dog and move the blacks down. Oh, it's crooked, too. Let's not, can we fix the crooked thing? Well, if we fix the crooked, we're going to cause a more I know, of a we, paw, we're, we're, paw losing, issue. we're losing the paw, but you already lost the paw. Um, but anyway, it's just too flashy. It's just, it's, and, and I helped a little. You know what yeah. would have helped? Turn down the stinking flash, because now you can make the shadows brighter and bring up the dog without it looking super flashy. It's just too flashy. If you had turned that flash down by half, you'd have been in good shape. And this is the case for two out of three of these. This one, same thing. Just too much flash. Now, this third one looks like it is lit with natural light. And I, I like... Or if I, it wasn't, it was a very balanced flash. I think that's natural that's light. That's natural light. But anyway, I would say long that. story short, uh, you've got a, a, a weird stray hair right here that you should get rid of. Yeah. Right? 
But other than that, um, you know, I would have had, if you can get the dog, working with dogs, they're not like with, with actors where you're a model where you turn right and they just turn, but a little more light on the other side of his face. These are really good, so though. Good. And your post-processing. I like your post, like the way you're handling the, the, the uh, fur on the dog and the hair on the dog. And it's so I think the two big things that you could do is... Watch the pause. Make sure turn you're not down cutting off on anything and turn on the flash. All right. I mean, I think right there, that'd right. be a yep. way improvement. Let's keep going. Let's see. We got a few more we can get through here. All right. Here we go. Well. All right. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. It is a mixed this bag. This is a very interesting formation. It's called uh, Shiprock. Nicely, is the name of that nicely, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, composed, nicely composed, and shot in the worst light you could find if you went searching for it. So it, it's just you shot it at the wrong time of day. If you had got there in the morning and done everything the same, you would have a really, really good shot. Now, one thing you can do to kind of help fix this is let's get the uh, masking tool, get the linear gradient, let's darken this whole foreground up right here. Go to exposure and darken it up. That is one thing that's making it look kind of bad. Just darken that because there's no reason for that to be all bright. Let me move it a little further maybe like that. Then let's do the same thing again. Let's hit create a new mask, make it another linear gradient and start up here and let's darken that sky a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't want to make it look like it's raining. And then let's do one more. And let's do select subject. And then let's, you know, lower the that a little bit. Bring up the white. So, because there's like highlights on there. And then let's bring the blacks down. I'm telling you, I think you got something here. Let's go a little Definitely. further and get some texture and clarity. A little bit on there. And I think with just those little things, it's better. It ain't great because you didn't shoot it at the right time of day. Shooting it at the right time of day, you, you'd have had a really killer shot. But anyway, and that's just a 30-second take on it. But anyway, yeah. but photography-wise, pretty good. But an important part of photography is getting good light. Um, this one just, get, just it's got to go. Yeah, there's it's nothing It's got to go. It's just nothing. It's a small, tiny bird. It's just nothing. Just nothing. This is interesting. It looks that's like you were in Turkey. Yeah. And looks like the cop, the capital of Turkey, which is gobble gobble. No, stupid joke. Okay, sorry. Yes. All right, but you were there. Uh, I know that they all there's release at the same time. Yeah, there's a big there. thing that that they do. Uh, it's just unfortunately your lighting, and you can't do much about this. But you know what the problem is? Is all of the balloons are backlit. So I wonder if you could go in and bring up the shadows so at least we see the color of the balloons and then work on the rest of the hard. stuff. Yeah, but well, that's a little better, really, if you look at it. It is better. It is better. And you probably like this guy over here. So you, you probably have some stuff in here that well, you don't that's need. You would say, well, Scott, how can I know? I mean, the one thing you know is when you're working with the sun and angles, you can always know if your subject's going to be for backlit or front lit if you know which direction the sun's going to come from. I know, but you may not have a choice of so where to you, stand. If like, you had a choice. I, I bet you probably have maybe a, a family member in one of these or something. Yeah. You know, let's kind of darken this If you have a choice, up. look for something where you can get that front lit. And also your color, it's kind of, everything's kind of blue. Let's add a little bit of warmth to it. And let's drop the highlights so you're not seeing so much of the... Yeah, it just needs a little work. You, you were in the, a really cool place, and it is actually a pretty cool shot because it really it's not cool. something you see every day, but it's in Turkey. Uh, that's That one's just got to go. That this one, is good. This see, is good. The, the other what? two, that's where that one's the curveball. Where it's like, that's, that's like, what is that even doing in what, there? What Get rid of that. Is that. Get rid of that. All right, let's look at a couple more real quick. We're, we're almost out of time. Let me see what else we got. Yeah. Oh, great. My bridge is crashed well, we have to give a couple prizes away go ahead and do it because my bridge crashed so i've got um aj bromero is winning the platypod extreme and then we have margaret mallet jade jaden winning the light it shoot it retouch it 
Then we have Graham Pace winning Scott's travel photography book. Wendy Patera winning the V flats. Then Kevin R winning the dual board XL. Bill M's winning the on one effects. Uh, Deb Photogra is winning the photography trivia. And if you guys email us over at gridprize at kelby1.com, we'll verify information, send you out your prize. Hey, can I tell you something? We give away a lot of stuff every show. It's like a six lot. prizes. One, a two, lot. three, four, five, six. That's seven prizes. One, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five. That's seven. Every That's week. That's a lot. That's not bad. We All right. Let's look at a couple of images. A extra one. Little extra trivia there. All right. Here we go. Let's take a look. Well, there is, th these are kind of cool because you're, you're photographing a hunt, but unfortunately, like no one's it's, doing anything. It's the part They're of just, the hunt that is boring. Yeah. You basically, <laughs> no one's even looking at the camera. There's just kind of like, well, are, are they here yet? When are they coming? There's nothing going on there. There's yeah. really not much going on here. And a pole and, coming out of his head. Yeah. And a pole coming out of his head and not much going on here. You were at a really neat event, and, and getting tighter, I think, would certainly help, right? Getting in tighter. I'd like to see the writers. Like, I would love to see. Now, she's boring, right? She's not. She's boring. She's, boring. she's doing. Well, first, they're, they're not doing some, anything that is. Right. There's no action. There's but, no but moments. You could get a more interesting shot of her right in here. There, there are much more interest. She's not doing anything interesting, and that's a really poor crop. But there, there are more interesting things to be had in this hunt. Yeah, you so, definitely got to hunt for a better picture. Yeah, I see what you did there. But anyway, there, there's a lot of things that you could do. And unfortunately, this just kind of looks like, oh, look, they're going by, and I was standing on the side of the road. I pulled my car off and took a couple of quick shots. It doesn't look like there's a lot of thought put into these shots, and. Uh, you got all the telephone That's poles. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, there's just not yeah. much thought put into them. Yeah. And uh, there's, you know, so it's, it's kind of. Looks like you like pulled off and ran up on it and you just like, yeah, take some pictures. All right. Vulture looking into a car. <laughs> That's nothing. That could have been something. Oh, the Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, you lost a whole leg there. Yeah, amputated. <sighs> Boy, you could have had something. That one had that potential. That one had potential. I like now, the, the other two, I'm not sure nope. I could see potential. No. How about no? You know what? Vulture shots are not are not too great well, anyway. These, these are the shots that I think that... I, I understand why people get drawn to them, but they're nothing shots. But it's because it's... Doing something that's like you'd never seen before. Like yeah. it's a vulture hey, look, looking at his reflection. Taking a stupid shot and making it black and white doesn't make it good. What is this? You don't have a cloud in the sky, which kind of kills it. It looks like a truck drove through here. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's not, it's, it's nothing. This is one where your camera fired by nothing accident. with uh, craziness going on up here. Yeah, and a tons of noise There's and tons junk of noise in the sky. On the top. This, this has potential, but unfortunately... Uh, for some reason you blew it and this is a, a vulture looking in the bumper i i don't making them black and white does not make them art yep. these are these are this one had, that potential. one had potential i'm telling you that had potential oh come on i hate to see uh, that because you had potential there and you kind of kind of blew it here what we got here Ooh, that's kind of nice. nice it's a little busy but still nice that's nice it's it's kind of uh, uh uh needs contrast that looks like yeah. a postcard doesn't it it definitely does and that's kind of me all right this one unfortunately well let's first off let's rotate it and let's get in tight in fact i think i would probably make this a wide shot well it was a wide shot but that's infinitely more interesting now your job is to get rid of some of this extra junk yeah. in here and just simplify the scene up. Just simplify it, like get rid of these ones growing out of the bird's head and maybe just get rid of some of the superfluous ones that you just don't need. But that's that's really, I think there's a better shot in there than what you have here. This one, I, I this would be good just to remember, but it, it really needs contrast and, and dehaze in, in a huge way. 
uh, because they're just it's there's it's funky and then it's too vibrant so you pull the vibrance back down so it doesn't look crazy but look we, we moved two sliders and look at the difference it just and and you got a nice gradation in the sky now and uh i mean that one's maybe pleasing up, i mean that that it maybe, feels like a postcard yeah yeah it's not bad it definitely feels like a postcard. maybe you bring up the uh, exposure and the shadows a little bit i think you you could have something is it there. crooked yeah, well, yeah, it's crooked. <laughs> Man, come on. Crooked. There you go. Crooked. There you go. Yeah, it was crooked. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah, with that post processing, yeah, I feel like that could be on a postcard. And this one's just kind of messy. It's just kind of uh, not long enough on the exposure. It looks like you went to F22 instead of actually using an ND filter, but it was kind of messy and stuff anyway. One thing you could help to get rid of the messy stuff is to get rid of some of this extra superfluous stuff. So if you went in here, kind of more on the stream, because that's what it was really about, right? This little stream. That's not bad. It's not, it's not, it's not killer. Bad. It's not, that's not awesome. Yeah. Just look for a nicer stream. I mean, it's a little tiny puddly thing with not a, with not a long enough exposure. Would you go uh, a fiftieth of a second? Yeah, half a second. Half a second's not an a f eight. Yeah, not a, that's not long enough. You could have gone down to ISO one hundred, gone up to f f twenty two. Yeah, I would have dropped your there. ISO and it would have stayed up open a lot longer. Yep, a lot. And, longer. and you would have got a nicer. That would have helped a lot, but it's just it's a little bit busy. Or you do the magic thing and put an ND filter on it. Yeah, it's just fine. Keep it at ISO 100. All right, here we go. Hmm. Okay. Two out of three Two ain't eight bad. Three, yeah. So this one's pretty nice. I would, I would have. Th there's something weird about the bokeh in the background. This, I'm sure this was taken in a, in a what you I, call I it? I think that a, uh, that's a. The enclosure, the fence or the enclosure. that's kind of causing that weird bokeh, but yeah, yeah, because it almost looks like a weird background. Let's effect. add a little. Uh, that's uh, so it needs a little uh, color a there. Warmth. Yeah, a little warmth. That that. But so watch the difference. See how the the animal was kind of blue. So that's the first thing. Yes, yeah, it's not. The it's, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Needs a little no, blue. Not, that's not bad. Yeah, that's the that's, middle one is great. Yeah, the next one. Uh. Yeah, this one's very nice. Yeah. I like the lighting and the color. The only thing I would do is maybe back off a little on yeah. this right here. There's a little highlights. Because those those highlights are kind of bright. You can go to the masking tool. You could actually use, can you use the object select tool over here to select? Will it select just that? Oh, no, it didn't, it didn't do it. So just forget that. Oh, and yeah. let's just get a brush. And let's darken the exposure and the highlights and just kind of paint that down. That whole thing just needs to be not so bright. Am I moving the right sliders? There we go. Just kind of bring all that down. And and then you see how it's turning blue up there? Just add a little yellow in there so you don't see that. But that's that's a nice shot. Yeah. I like, I, I like the lighting and it's kind of interesting and, and nice and sharp. Unfortunately, this one is kind of nah. meh. Nah, it's it's the lighting's kind of bad. Middle of the day lighting. Middle of the day, kind of harsh and all. Yeah, and so. then eating some molted lettuce. But you got two out of three ain't bad. That's pretty good. And you know, it's not easy to shoot in a zoo. Ooh, now I like, I like that. Oh, that's a nice bird. Oh, that's nice. Look how clean it is. These are all very nice. Look at how clean this shot is. We yeah. talk a lot about this. Eric and I have talked Simple. a lot about today. There's something, the bird's doing something interesting. It's nice and in sharp. It's clean. It's a clean shot. No this is a very clean shot with a nice background. You do have a little bit of a black glow. Yes, a dark glow. All right, glow. remind me, next week I'm going to do the how to get rid of glows. glows. We're going to do glows next week. That's my Photoshop tip for next week. Glows are And hard. guys, if I forget... Just ping me. I'll. I've, I've, no, I will remember. Yeah. All right. Glows. Glows. Are, Next week, how to get rid of those glows? Because they, they do appear. It's like they're troublesome. But these are good. These are all good action shots. They're good. They're interesting. They're well done. They're sharp. They're clear. I'm loving it. We're almost done, folks. We're only got three left. Here we go. It's crooked. That's too big of a vignette. That's nice. I think I would have darkened the sky. Uh, which 
If only there was a program that would choose the sky for you by clicking on masking and hit sky. Mm -hmm. Just bring Didn't that do like an bring awesome it down job on it. Yeah. And you see that glow? Yep. Make sure you watch next, next week. week. <laughs> next week we're talking about glows, but see how just darkening that sky makes your your foreground subject pop out. Don't hey, ignore the glow because we'll get rid of that next. I mean, week. they're not they're not bad. This is not that's all right. That's an Iceland. This one this is, is too much. Too, too much, much vignetting. This is like 2004 called. They want their vignette back. And then well, um, you might be able to just crop in past the vignette. This is just crooked it. and it's a little it's a little overcooked. It's not bad. It's not bad. I, I would have liked to see a long exposure there, but not that's not bad. Oh, overall, these all three of these are like the photography's yeah. good. Good photographer. They're doing the, they're doing everything right. I think part of it right now, as I'm seeing, is the over processing. Man, the over processing stuff today has been over the top. Oh, sorry. All right, let's look at. Can I? What's going on here? Here we go. Well, one out of three ain't bad. All right. This is this is like you did a good job of separating her from the background and stuff, but she's giving you nothing. It's kind of a... Oh, she's looking over that yeah. way. There's not a great expression. Remember those portraits I, I'm we saw earlier? I'm having a hard time with this one, seeing which one's the one out of the three. This one? I don't even know what's going on here. Yeah. This one, I think, has really good potential. I like the post-processing. I would yeah. have loved to see both hands in focus because that other hand's got some really interesting rings and interesting watch. If you could get that hand on the right to have the sharpness and clarity, I think hands can be really interesting. Joe McNally does a wonderful job with showing close-ups of hands and stuff. I can see what you're saying. That could be really interesting because it's just it, it, it's just the weathering and the, and the, the yeah. post-processing is really good on that. Yeah. Shotgun. This uh, one's just kind of nah, and this is kind of nah, and this is. These are kind of shots of nothing. Well, and they're shots of maybe there's something in the context if you were there, but we yeah. can't see it at all. She looks and, bored and, I think and she's that's looking what, off to the right. I like her look. That's what's so hard that I think people don't understand you, is like people are not where you are when you show them this photograph. Right. Like we have no context. We, right. You have to tell the story in the photo. And these photos are not, not telling, telling the, story. the story. And this one, I don't know. Like some, this one kind of starts making me think that I want to know what's going on. But at the same yeah, time, it, there's like, I don't understand why the people over to the right are so disengaged with what's going on. So it just doesn't make any sense. I wonder if there's something in here. Yeah. Well, but he's so he's, distracting. That's what I'm saying. He's, and he's also, he's not looking at all engaged with what's going on. It, this is where... Traveling with your free feet and getting a better background shot or a better, like, isolating shot of what was interesting was that. Whatever's happening there is obviously what you were going after. It had see, to be. See, this guy, I like the guy over on yeah. the left. But that's where you had to move over from this other Because this one. is where the story is, that's right? What, that's this what is I'm where saying. the story yeah, is. That's yeah. the story. And that the one guy to the right and then yeah, all this that guy crap, and i'm looking at his text and all yeah. this and, yeah and, and the one guy a, in the middle is just taking so much of the frame so I'm, I'm gonna say you have one and a half all that's right it. all right and last There's one in there last one here we go all right well two out of three yeah so this is I, you captured I the right moment somebody won a, a race but the yeah. lighting is so bad. So it's like great moment and everything else bad. Yeah, I'm just not sure about that. Yeah, just yeah. everything else but bad. That might just be, I was just capturing that moment. It's yeah. just, it was might not be your friend, great moment, bad, bad lighting. Bad. All right, this is very interesting. Yeah, I love that. That's great. You got a Delta, Delta Jet. And you shot it at the right time of day where it's not completely at night. This was actually yeah. taken during the day. That's why the jet is lit up. Yep. You know, if not, but then underexposing it. Yeah, that, that's a cool technique. That's cool. I like it. And and I'm I'll, I'll let yeah I'll leave this to I you. Like it looks like too. it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean how, about, maybe, how do you like the glow around the trees? Do you maybe like the gray glow? that glow. Yeah, huh? all the way. Next week, but it's next glow week, week I bet you'll figure out how to knock down that glow. Glow week on the grid. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's it for today. All right.
thanks to everybody that sent them in, and I hope you took them in the in the right way. We're trying to trying to tell you what to do to fix these things and to get better photography. Now, this thing, Eric and I know, goes one of two ways. People write and said, you know what, you're right. I see what I did wrong. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to do these things. And they'll send us their pictures a couple weeks later, and they're night and day. The other way it goes is someone says, you're all wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And they go, they go on and on and on and, and tell then us about, why their about, picture was so good and we just, we didn't grasp it. Yeah. And then 18 months later, they send a follow-up note. <laughs> 18 months ago, you trashed my thing. Now, look now at I look at it and say, you were right all the time. Yeah, we do get yeah, that. We I do get, get that. those that say, I was really mad and I sent you a nasty note. And then a year later, they come back and go, yeah, that was crap. Yeah. And I didn't realize it at the time. Anyway. But uh, thank you. I mean, it takes guts to, to send in your images. It does. For, I've sat through uh, reviews, and it's it's some of the – now, I've gotten reviews from people like Dave Black and Joe McNally, and uh, it's uh, – well, and you, I tell them. You want just, people to be honest with you. I don't want to be like, them, yeah. Just, tell me the truth. Yeah. Tell me the truth. And you know what was bad with Dave Black? Dave's doing mine, and he goes, Let, I want to see a whole shoot. Let's open up a whole shoot. Like – Get me 2,400 images from your last baseball game, and let's go through them. I'm like, oh, God, here oh we go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it was a long day. But, like, I'm there with Joe McNally going through my portfolio, and I'm, I'm deleting images from my portfolio during the critique. I'm like, what Joe's like, this? what is? why is this even is here? This? It's gone. It's not here now. <laughs> you know what I didn't do with Joe? I didn't argue why it should be there. I didn't say, no, Joe, it's better than it looks. Yep. No, you know, uh, Jay, Ma Jay Maisel is a great saying. He goes, when, you're, when your picture's hanging in a gallery, you're not there to defend it. It either works or it doesn't. They either come That's by and they get it or understand. they don't. You're not sitting there going, I know this doesn't look good, but you don't realize, you know, it was a really bright day and I was on a tour and I couldn't help it. That's the only time I could get this shot, you know. Or that whole thing of like those images we just saw where you go like, well, you don't understand like what was happening during that moment. It's like we're not there that's the photo has to say yep, that I'm, I'm and now there's people who is. can go to that event that's where like what jay mazel is a master at is he can walk into a setting yep and pull a story out of that setting yes and that's the difference when you're great photographers can do that good photographers take okay shots and then most people just take snapshots let me tell you jay mazel or joe mcnally one of those guys would have been at that dog hunt and they had to come yeah. back with a picture Killer. that had just made you like. And, it and, and be then what you go, you think. like, where was that? Yeah, when where was that? that when did happen? that happen? And that you have to be aware and present at those things. So, that's where they just know. So uh, when I had my 20th, 20th, 20th wedding anniversary, we went to Hawaii. And we, had, we brought some friends and some family members and stuff. And we asked Joe, Joe and Annie, to come with us. And... Uh, and you can't just call up Joe and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you free stuff because Joe's like, you know, he's a very old school guy. So I said, all right, I, I, need, a, I need a photographer. I didn't need a photographer. Everybody there was a photographer. I'm like, Joe, I need a photographer. Uh, can I fly you to Hawaii and take pictures at my wedding? It's going to take 20 minutes. It was like a 20-minute thing. The shots that Joe got that are not your standard, we're standing... Mm -hmm. The shots that he got of like my daughter and my son, my daughter was very young and she was the flower girl. And then she got freaked out and she was too scared to do the flower. So my niece did it. But he was at a very small, simple event that nothing special happened at except for, I mean, we, we got remarried or whatever you want to call it. But the shots that he got, like, like are some of my wife's favorite shots she's ever had taken of her. And he... He can just be at the simplest thing, and I, it, it, it was just amazing. And I, I'm looking at him, and I was there, and I'm like, where did these shots – it's just what you were just talking about. That's what yeah. made me think of it. It's like, yeah. where did these shots even come from? He captured moments and, and things and views and stuff that you didn't even know went on, but it's so wonderfully no, captured and that that's day. What, that's what I think that does separate people when, when – that's when a you gift. Go, it's a when talent. You, that is the gift. The gift is when you can go to an event or you can go to something and then you'll walk away and other photographers like all oh, photographers like where did you shoot that? And I was like I was standing 10 feet from, from you. From you, yeah. Like it's the it's just about seeing it. Oh, it's about so seeing it. So my buddy Kelly who's was one of my uh was on my Tuscany trip. Right? He was one of the students on my Tuscany trip, but he's he's a friend. Um he sent me a picture yesterday. He got a 
25 by 30 or something big uh, exposure print. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. He goes, you were standing five feet, feet from me when, yep. when I shot it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have that I'm photo. I, I don't that. have that photo. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's like big, big, big print. You but know? that's where photography is more about seeing that it is all the gears and the settings and the buttons. No, the Eric, it's about the settings. I know. It's I about know. the settings. And next week, we'll teach you on how to remove those glows. Glow week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to our crew for coming in. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you next week for Glow Week. <laughs> Photoshop. Glow Week again. on the grid. Next week. Peace.